Good evening. This is the Northern Sun Experience. I'm David Brown, and the magical ride continues for the Dragons. Minnesota State Moorhead's men's basketball team received the second seed in the NCAA Central Region last weekend after falling to Augustana in the NSIC Conference Championship. And in order to advance to the Elite Eight, the Dragons would have to go back to the scene of its most recent loss, the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, where they would have a championship match against Northwest Missouri State, who upset Augie in the tournament semifinals. After a sluggish first half, Chad Walthall and the Dragons looking for a spark in the second, and Isaac Seedley was the man for the job. He throws it down off a feed from Jordan Reaver. Dragons up four. Moorhead would get to the rim a lot in the second half. Off the Bearcat turnover, nobody picks up Aaron Lean, coast to coast for two of his nine, and the Dragons would lead by ten. Back comes Northwest Missouri State. Justin Pitts blows by Prescott Williams. He had 14, and Northwest pulls within four, but the Dragons weren't going to let this one get away. On the next possession, Seedley hits his first three of the entire season. Not, not a better time to do it than right there. He is your tournament MVP, and Minnesota State Moorhead advances to the Elite Eight, 47-42 over Northwest Missouri State. Five years ago, I didn't know if we were ever going to get to this moment, and just to be a part of it with this group uh, all year long. I mean, 35-3, and three, I don't know if anyone would have guessed that coming into this season. It was one of those games where nobody could throw it in the ocean, and uh, it was really a defensive-oriented, grind-type tournament game, which we can play. Uh, I always tell our guys, I don't care if we win 198 or 2-0. to zero. Um, So I'm proud of our guys. Great effort. They deserve it. When we come back, Jordan Dalton's here to break down the men's central region. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by CU Mortgage Direct LLC, Sanford Health, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience. Joined once again by former Augustana point guard Jordan Dalton. And Jordan, I'm sorry, but your, your alma mater, they, <laughs> they, they kind of let a lot of people down in Sioux Falls, unfortunately. They uh, suffered a big upset in round two of the Central Region Tournament. They fall to Northwest Missouri State by a point, 66-65. They won their first round game big over Arkansas Tech. So how were the Bearcats able to upset the Vikings? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a tough way to go out, you know, especially after they had such a historic season. Uh, but you got to give the Bearcats defense a lot of credit. They were able to bu buckle down and, and really play great on-the-ball defense at all five positions, and that's extremely tough to do. Uh, we always talk about with Augie, they have a great inside-out game. So you got to try, try to take one of those away. And the Bearcats did a great job of taking away anything in the paint. You know, they were going to limit penetration. They were going to double on the post. Uh, they were going to make it very t difficult for Augustana to score inside the painted area. And unfortunately, Augie just had four nights shooting on the perimeter. You know, they only go six for 20 from the three-point line. And when you do that, it, it's, it's really tough to generate any offense, especially when you're going against a team like the Bearcats who can guard all five positions on the ball. Uh, that and uh, Justin Pitts was tough coming off that high ball screen. He's a lightning quick guard, and, and Augie just really couldn't keep him out of the paint. And he did a great job coming off that high ball screen. First of all, the big that was setting the screen, great shooter, great three-point shooter, so you can't help too much off of him. And then Pitts did a great job of just hitting some floaters, hitting some pull-up jump shots, and you got to give them credit. They won that game. You know, they, they did a great job of making shots when they needed to and coming up with big-time stops and rebounds when they needed to as well. You mentioned that Northwest Missouri State took away Augie's inside game and that Augie had a poor night shooting. Did that surprise you at all, knowing how versatile Augustana was that they couldn't get either inside or outside going? Well, it is tough, uh, and I think the toughest part was they didn't have too big of an advantage at any spot. You know, uh, Northwest Missouri State did a great job of covering up and double-teaming the post. Uh, and they, they really limited penetration. That's the other thing. So a lot of times when you get those three-point shots, if they're off a of penetration and kick, now that's a shot you're taking in rhythm and, and you're comfortable with. But when you had a standstill three-point shooter, you got to shoot off the, uh, off the bounce, a, a three-point shot like that. It's tough. And, and for, for whatever reason, Augie just couldn't seem to get a rhythm going on the offensive end. So, it's, like I said, it's a tough way to end a great season. Uh, they got everybody coming back. So, so hopefully they won't let this haunt them too bad. It'll, it'll give them a little extra motivation and get in the gym and come back next season and be ready to go. The Vikings finished that historic season, as you mentioned, 31-3. and three. And again, like you said, all juniors, sophomores, and freshmen, so everyone should be coming back for the Vikings next season. 
Now, despite that win, Northwest Missouri State could not get past Minnesota State Moorhead in the championship game. The Dragons are the Central Region champs, advanced to the first Elite Eight in school history. Kind of an ugly defensive <laughs> game uh, against Northwest Missouri State. But how was MSU Moorhead able to rebound from that conference championship loss they suffered at the Pentagon just two weeks ago and play well in the Central Tournament? Well, in their first two rounds, they played absolutely phenomenal. And Coach uh, Walthall always talks about the even kill nature of his basketball team. They don't get too high, they don't get too low. Uh, and I think a lot of that stems from their, their leader, Jordan Reaver. And so in the first two games, scored over 70% and assisted over, on over 64% of their shot, uh, made field goals. And so they're a team that has great offensive firepower, but once again, they just share the ball so well. They don't care who gets the credit, they play for one another. And that's exactly what those first two games show is that they still know who they are, they still understand their team identity, and they really came out and played well. Um, last night game, like you said, was an absolutely defensive battle and really an ugly game to watch. And, and you, you look at some of the stats. Moorhead scores a season low 47%, only make three three-point field goals, and turn the basketball over 10 times, yet they still win. And I think that's the marquee of a championship team. No matter what's going on, I know all conditions aren't always going to be favorable. You just have to find a way to win the game. And I thought at the end, uh, Jordan Reaver did a great job making clutch free throws, uh, really putting the Bearcats away. And at the end of the day, they just found, the more, more Dragons just find, found a way to win the basketball game. And that's why they're the regional champions. You mentioned Reaver making those clutch free throws down the stretch. He didn't shoot all that well during this game. To point out the fact that he's the co-player of the year, he didn't even make the all-tournament team because <laughs> he really didn't shoot that well. It was the depth of the Dragons that really carried them, wasn't it? Yeah, and it, it, that's, a, that's a character win is what I always say. Because once again, you, you go through a game like that and it's very, very frustrating. Uh, Northwest Missouri State already slows the game down, so there's a limited number of possessions in the game. And uh, the Dragons weren't able to get anything in transition. Uh, and, and so it's a really different game than the, the Dragons are used to playing. Yet they just found a way to win. And, and Coach Chad Walthall talked about that after the game. He said, hey, I don't care what the results were as long as, or what, how we did it as long as we won the game. It didn't have to be the prettiest game in the world. They won the game. Now they're moving on to the Elite Eight. Well, they'll take on Bellarmine from Kentucky next week in the Elite Eight. Before we move on to that, we'll get to the other NSIC teams that lost in the first round. We're going to start with Northern State, who fell to Central Missouri in that quarterfinal round. All things considered down the stretch, with the Wolves struggling mightily at the end of the regular season, but then they came back with a good NSIC tournament. How would you assess Northern State's season? Well, I think the main thing that I would assess uh, with Northern State is they're a tough-minded team. Every time they showed up on the basketball court, you know you're going to get 40 minutes of an absolute knockdown, drag out battle, and and so that's tough sometimes uh, for for di for the opponents because every time they show up, they know they're going to be in a fight, and that's what I love about Northern State. They're going to battle. They're not going to back away from anybody, and that proved they were in every game they played this year. You know, out of their nine losses, only four of them were by double digits, and two of those were in, uh, Minnesota State Moorhead. So they were in just about every game they played. They're just, they had an inability to create offense and really score the basketball. You know, they didn't have one player on their team in the top 25 in, in individual points per game. So they just didn't really have that go-to score that they can give the ball to and say, hey, 10 seconds, less on the shot, 10 seconds or less on the shot clock, we need a bucket. Or we're at the end of the game, it's a close game, we know exactly who we're going to to get a bucket. And so I think for them to really break into that top upper echelon teams of not only you know the conference but in, in this region, they're going to have to find a way to get to get, to get buckets and, and, and have a player that they have the confidence enough to give the ball to to really get them a, a, a point when they need it. Northern State, even though their last two games were losses to Augustana and Central Missouri, they pushed both of those teams fairly well. Well, the other team that fell in round one was Minnesota State to Northwest Missouri State, who eventually was the runner-up in the Central region. Considering the hype of the Mavs' two big seniors, Zach Monahan, Asa Marai, how do you sort of view this season for Minnesota State Mankato? It kind of took a weird turn. It seemed like they had an inability to close out games. Yeah, and, and the tough part with Minnesota State Mankato is you talked about the two studs they had, and, and Monahan and Mariah. And they played like it for the majority of the year. Uh, you know, Monahan averages 16 and almost eight assists a game, and uh, Mariah averages 19 and, and nine boards a game. And, and so they even had, had some help coming off, uh, or with the newcomer of the year, Connor Miller, averaging 12 points a game. 12 points per game and so it's tough when you look at their team because the supporting cast just never came around uh tj lake had a couple bright spots where he would shoot the ball well from the outside but it looked like a team who didn't really have a, a true identity and the supporting cast didn't really know their roles and so that was the tough part because they weren't able to get over that hump 
And granted, their hump, I feel like, was a lot larger than other teams because when you're talking about breaking into the top one or two teams in the conference this year, you're talking about Augie, who has the best season in, uh, in, in school history. And you're talking about the Minnesota State Moorhead Dragons, who have the best season in school history. <laughs> and so Mankato was always a loaded, a talented team. They just couldn't figure out how to build that team chemistry. And I think in the offseason, it's going to be really telling to see how are they going to replace so much production. Uh, Zach Monahan has the ball in his hand, it seems like 75, 80% of the time when, when they're on the offensive end of the court. So who's going to be willing and able to step up and replace some of that production that they're leaving behind? Minnesota State Mankato falls to Northwest Missouri State in the Central Region for the second straight year. Well, we'll move back to Minnesota State Moorhead. They are in the Elite Eight in Evansville, Indiana next week. They're going to take on Bellarmine University from Kentucky out of the Great Lakes Valley Conference. Simple point blank question. Now that they're in the Elite Eight, can the Dragons win it all? I absolutely think the Dragons have just as good a team as anybody in the country. Uh, number one, we talked about the mentality. They play for each other. They don't care who gets the credit. They share the basketball. And as long as they win the game, they could care less. And when you combine that type of mentality with the talent they have on the offensive end, uh, it, it's going to be very, very difficult to knock them out of the tournament. Like I said, when you look at Jordan Reaver, I would trust him with the basketball in just about any situation. He's a sniper from the three-point line. He makes phenomenal decisions with the basketball. And, he, and the team really follows his lead. So when you have that type of offensive talent and that leader uh, with, with the, the coach of the year in Chad Walthall, they're going to be a tough out in the tournament. And, and now you're in the Elite Eight where – and like I said, it's a, it's a one-game season every, every game. And, and so I think they have just as good a uh, chance to win this thing as anybody else. Well, we shall certainly find out next week. Well, Jordan's going to break down the women's central region a bit later. But when we come back, we turn our attention to some individual NSIC student-athletes who became national champions over the weekend. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by CU Mortgage Direct, LLC, Sanford Health, and Dakota Land Honda. Let's switch gears a little bit and focus on a couple of other championships that went down this past weekend. We'll start in St. Louis, where 17 NSIC wrestlers were vying for individual national titles at the NCAA championships. And while there were plenty of great matches, the best drama was saved for an all-NSIC clash at 125 pounds. St. Cloud State junior Tim Prescott took on Augustana junior TJ North, and it would come down to the final minute. With 45 seconds remaining, Prescott gets a critical two points as he gains control on North for a 3-2 lead. And in the final seconds, he would not relinquish that slim margin. Prescott had lost to North twice earlier this year, but he won when it counted the most. Tim Prescott is your 2015 national champion at 125 pounds, and he propelled St. Cloud State to its first ever team championship as well. Afterwards, he discussed how his underdog mentality fueled him to victory. They've been in the run almost every year and they keep falling short and I find myself with my career the same way. I've, I fell short quite a bit, just right near that title every time and um, I knew they were going to be just as hungry as I am and we'll be able to push each other to the top and you know, um, just to be a part uh, of sealing the deal uh, for a team is just phenomenal. I mean, I'm speechless. I, it's great. Congrats again to Prescott. He, along with all five of his Husky teammates at Nationals, received All-American honors. Here's a list of all the NSIC wrestlers who reached All-American status at Nationals. 13 of the 17 wrestlers received that distinction. And as I mentioned, St. Cloud State as a team won its first national championship with a grand total of 84 and a half points. Moving a little further south to Birmingham, Alabama, we head to the NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championships. The NSIC came away with three individual champions. On the men's side, Sioux Falls junior Jagger Grand cleared 16 feet 10 and 3 quarters inches in the pole vault to come out on top. Meanwhile, on the women's side, Wayne State's Sarah Wells took top honors in the shot put, winning the event by nearly 3 feet with a throw of 54 feet 2 and 3 quarters inches. It's the first indoor championship in Wildcat history. And finally, a freshman phenom made her mark on the championships in the weight throw. Winona State's Caitlin Long took home top honors, coming from behind on one of her final tosses with a tournament best throw of 68 feet 8 and 3 quarters inches. Not only did Long win the championships as a freshman, she was the only freshman in the entire field. Not bad for someone who wasn't exactly sure what she was going to do at Winona State when she arrived on campus. I didn't even know what weight throw was <laughs> until uh, August or September, so it's just kind of crazy to know that 
I'm a national champion in weight throw now. When I came to WSU, I was a little unsure of uh, how successful I would be, I guess. I uh, wasn't really expecting to have so much success so quickly. Coming up next, highlights from the NSIC Women's Basketball Central Regional. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by CU Mortgage Direct LLC, Sanford Health, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience. After an impressive NSIC tournament victory, Northern State's women's basketball team appeared to be entering the NCAA tournament on a high note. The Wolves held the Wayne State Wildcats to a season low in points and had enough offense from both inside and outside for a complete win. Wolves hoping to use a total team effort to grab an upset win over Pittsburgh State. First half, NSU gets it down to all reliable. Rachel Krogman with a nice step through. She had 12 on the afternoon. Later in the half, Paige Watashik finds Sadie Stotesbury down low for the easy bucket. She led the Wolves with 14, but the Gorillas proved to be the more impressive defensive team. Kylie Gafford with the last second block, fast break gets ahead for the lay-in, and Pittsburgh State tops the NSIC champion 60-53. Other scores from the Central Region, Minnesota State nearly upsets Fort Hayes State. They actually had a lead at halftime, but they eventually fall to Fort Hayes State. Wayne State topped Harding in the first round, but they fell to Fort Hayes State in the second round. So Wayne State is the furthest team to go in the Central Region from the NSIC. Jordan Dalton returns for our final segment to break down the women's regional and tells you his biggest takeaway from the season in general. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by CU Mortgage Direct LLC, Sanford Health, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience, joined once again by Mr. Jordan Dalton. And Jordan, let's break down the Women's Central Region Basketball Tournament. A successful season for NSIC women's hoops, but no region champion going to the Elite Eight like the men. Let's start with Northern State, however. They won the conference tournament, but they fell in the first round to number three, Pittsburgh State. Now, they only gave up 60 points. That's their typical MO. But did the lack of offense hurt them in this game? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's been their, their Achilles heel the entire season. They've always been a tough nose, gritty team on the defensive end. They just weren't able to generate enough offense and in the second half they, they really shot themselves in the foot they went 0 for 9 from the three-point line and just and only shot 29 percent from the field and we've talked about it all year they're a slow methodical team that runs a ton of sets and so when you get later into the season teams have a lot of film on you so they're able to see a lot of your tendencies and and read a lot of those sets to prepare for them and so like i said when when you play that the pace that they play at you have to get to the free throw line in, in order to, to have some type of success because it, it gets to be grueling when you have to score on a set every single time in the half court setting. Second half uh, of their game against Fort Hayes, uh, you know, they just weren't able, uh, or excuse me, second half of, of their game, they just weren't able to, to get to the free throw line at all. They only have four free throw attempts in the entire second half. Well, you mentioned going 0 of 9 from deep. They shot the lights out during the NSIC <laughs> championship, and you mentioned that was an anomaly. Did that sort of prove to be the case? Yeah, once again, we knew they're, they're, they're just not a strong offensive team. They're just not the way their team is built, uh, especially on the perimeter. Uh, you know, you have one of the best players uh, in the country and Rachel Krogman down low, who's, you know, accounted for a double-double just about every night. But they just didn't have the shooters on the on the perimeter. And they also didn't have the slashers. We talked about getting to the lane, creating shots not only for yourself, but others, and then also getting to the free throw line. Uh, I, I think that's just a huge tool when you're able to get those easy type of points uh, and they just weren't able to utilize that offensive tool. Northern State wins its first conference championship but loses in the first round of the Central Region. Well, the other NSIC team to bow out in round one was Minnesota State Mankato. They were the number eight seed. They fell the number one Fort Hayes State. You don't want to call this a happy to be there situation, mm -hmm. but they were a huge underdog. So what can the Mavs take from this game? Well, I think anytime you set up on the court and, you, and the, the ball goes in the air, you have to have the mentality that we can win this basketball game. And, and so, like you said, I don't think the Mavericks came out just happy to be there, and they proved that in the first half. You know, going into half, they're up by two points against the number one team in the region. And so they really came out and played well. But this game was kind of a microcosm of their entire season where they turned the basketball over 10 times in the second half, which led to them being outscored by 19 points in the second half. And so, you know, they have always had as much talent as anybody in the conference. They just shoot themselves in the foot with turnovers. And if they really want to get to that next level, they just can't turn the basketball over. Great teams don't beat themselves. They force other teams to beat them. 
and, and unfortunately, Mankato just didn't, Minnesota State Mankato just didn't have uh, enough focus on the offensive end to not turn the basketball over. Uh, but hats off to them to, to coming out and playing that way in the first half. They really showed that they deserve to be in that eight seed. Yeah, they were in that sort of that eight region for the last couple weeks of the regular season. But as you said, they proved they belong with their strong performance, at least in the first half against Fort Hayes State. Well, the only NSIC team to advance past the first round was Wayne State. They were the four seed. They topped number five Harding in round one, then fell to Fort Hayes State, the top seed in round two. So using those two postseason games, how would you assess just the Wildcats season in general? They rebounded from that conference championship loss and won a game in the Central Region Tournament. Yeah, and I think if you kind of take that the tournament and look at their entire season. They're starting five. They had studs on their starting five. And, and their first game of the, the regional tournament, all five starters scored in double figures. And, and so and accounted for over 84% of their points. So they had great athleticism on the wings, and they had phenomenal post players who could really just outrun a lot of other teams. And so they've always been a great offensive team. They just struggle when they can't hit three-pointers. And we talked about that. When you can't hit perimeter shots, the court just shrinks. And, and so teams are able to key in on their post players, double down on their post players, and really not allow them to have one-on-one -on -one coverage down low. It was kind of a, a weird NSIC season overall. Concordia St. Paul was the overwhelming favorite heading in, and they just, I don't know if you can say fell off a cliff, but they <laughs> finished below 500, just didn't seem to get it together. So now that it's over, what's maybe your biggest takeaway from just the women's season in general? I think the biggest takeaway is your team has to have an identity, whether it's Northern who plays tough-nosed defense and slows the pace down, or whether it's Wayne State who uh, plays great offense. You, your team has to have an identity, and the entire team has to buy in on that and understand their role. And if you do that, you're going to have some success. All right, well, thank you very much much Jordan for breaking things down remember for more information on all things NSIC you can visit northernsun.org once again a thank you to all of our member schools for their contributions to this week's show and we'll see you next week for another Northern Sun experience <laughs>